Uh, we'll move on to our next uh, speaker now. Um, it is Daigo Takuchi from the Pickower Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. Uh, and his talk is titled, The Role of Cingulate Motor Circuits for Organizing Sequential Choice Actions. Daigo, just be sure to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. Yeah, can you see my screen? Okay. Okay, so first I'd like to thank all the collaborators and colleagues. I think one of the most prominent features of human behaviors is a hierarchical organization involving you know, serial orders. Think, for example, making coffee or speaking or writing behaviors. Psychologists have been interested, interested in the mental processes underlying those behaviors for years. Something. Yeah. And sometimes those behaviors need an adjustment when the rule changes. The flexible behaviors, uh, behavioral adjustments are known to be disruptive in patients with frontal lobe damages. In yeah. testing the flexibility of behavior using UC research in frontal lobe, lobe function. So what brain sucking mechanisms? Oh, okay, uh, so what brain sucking mechanism underlies a hierarchical behavior? The organization of such behavior in the face of a root change. Previous studies suggested that it is often single behavior, so it still remains to be solved, but sucking mechanism differential choice to address this question, uh, we devise a behavioral task uh, that we call conditional action sequencing task. Okay. For cat task, in this task, in each trial, rats were required to make differential choice decisions to obtain a reward. In every 30 to 100 trials, uh, there's a change of task rule, and the number of choice steps are switched uh, between the two steps and a single step shown here. We put this block as a first block, sequence trial, and rules will switch block. So here's a task structure in two steps, uh, two steps task choice condition. Uh, when the rats enter the center level, to stimulus is delivered from a speaker at a high frequency tone or low frequency tone, then animal is required to choose left or left port or right port, depending on the presented tone two. For example, if tone A is delivered, animal needs to go left to obtain the reward. If the rat goes to the right, it cannot um, obtain a reward and instead lose the tone is delivered at a higher signal. If the animal makes a correct first choice, then it needs to go to the opposite side right, to obtain the second Animal returns to the second one, but the right, but the other tone is delivered as an error feedback and no second reward is delivered. Similar thing happens in the tone B condition. So please remember that there, there are two types of error errors here choice one, error or error one, or choice two, or error two. And this is a task structure in single step choice condition, different rule. And the task is basically the same. And, uh, uh, same as this uh, two step condition, except that there are only one choice required. So, it, essentially, it is a simple condition. So, please keep in mind that if the animal makes a sequential two step choice, like first go to the left and then to the right, then at this time, an error feedback is delivered instead of a second reward. In this first condition, animal should go to the left and then directly return to the center level. Uh, then, next trial will start. So we trained rats with, uh, with this uh, cast type and conducted chemogenetic intervention experiments and tested if the suppression of single complex neurons affect the task performance. If it does, what aspects of task behavior is affected? To test this, we bilaterally injected uh, with inhibitor red virus in the single complex here. Uh, 
we interrupted the injected the CNO and waited 30 to 40 minutes and then conducted the behavior disturbance. And those were the kids because the sick drug and conducted both for sexual assault. Thank you. 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 In other words, the chemogenetic suppression of single neuron did not affect the fast choice for three discrimination performance in single step condition. So similarly, we plotted the patent error rate in the fast choice of the two step through condition. Again, we found no statistical difference between the two condition. In other words, chemogenetic suppression of single neuron did not affect fast choice performance in two step through condition. Then we plotted the patent error rate Second choice of the two step through condition. Here we did find a statistically significant difference between two CNO conditions. Uh, now the question is what does this mean? Does this mean that the chemogenetic suppression of a single cortex affects making the second choice, or did it actually affect the ability to adapt to the rule change from single step to the two steps condition? Which is the case. To test to tease these possibilities apart, we analyze the error rate in the half block and in the rule switch block separately. And here's the result. When we repeated the same analysis using only one, uh, only the first block, we did not find a statistically significant difference between two scan of conditions. In other words, in the first block, chemogenetic suppression did not increase the error rate in the second choice although we did see some tendency here. In contrast, in the rule switch block, we did find a statistically significant difference between the two CNN conditions. In the rule switch block, chemogenetic suppression of single neurons did increase the error rate in the second choice. So this result suggests that single cortex circuit is necessary to make correct sequential choices, specifically when the task rule switches. So the next question is, how can the single cortex do this? What is the circuit mechanism? To address this circuit question, uh, we next uh, investigated projection from the single cortex anatomically. We did two virus experiments, one is rabies virus and the other is virus. We tested if there are projections from a single cortex to premotor cortex. In both experiments, we could confirm retrogradely radial cells in single cortex here in the rabies experiments and here in the and we could confirm that uh, Primota received projections from single cortex. Then a question of what is the functional role of this correction? To address this question, sorry, I cannot. Sorry. Uh, to address this question, we conducted unit activity measurements in Primota cortex with chemogenetic intervention of single, single neurons. Single neurons. That were implanted with array electrodes like this, black box arrays in both areas covering the large part of remote areas, uh, and M2 areas. We obtained 47 units in 30 sessions from the same branch. Okay. <laughs> then for each unit, we constructed a per event time histogram and calculated the firing rate. Aspect. Then the influence of CNO on the firing rate of premotor units was quantified using the following index data. Uh, here, uh, data was defined as a ratio of median value of firing rate of, of all the units obtained in CNO plus conditions divided by the median value of firing rate obtained in CNO minus conditions. And here's the results. Uh, we plotted a trial average firing rate in the one second period immediately after the first reward delivery, only in the first block of the two step through condition. We plotted the two uh, tone two conditions separately and tested if there is statistically significant difference in pairing rate in this and plus and minus condition. We found a statistically significant difference between two set of conditions in both two, uh, uh, two conditions. So you can see here, the firing rate decreased from 44% with a heta value of 0.56. Similarly, in tone Q1 condition, the firing rate increased 46% using heat value of 0.573. Uh, 
we repeated the same analysis in other test conditions. Uh, this figure shows the result of the second real data. Again, we found that this is anything different between the two conditions. And this figure uh, shows the result of the first real period, the road switch blocks instead of the fast block. Again, we found that the same difference be, uh, between the two conditions. Then, uh, this figure also shows the result of the second real period in the road switch block. Again, we found a statistical difference between the two conditions. So we repeated the same analysis in all past conditions, not only in the post reward period, but uh, also in the post zero period, or in immediate before and after the continuous and potential period. In all the past conditions, we actually saw the decrease in the time rate in the standard plus condition compared to that in the standard minus condition. So as a first approximation, the thermogenic application machine is for this decrease time rate in the pre model. However, there may be a dip, uh, difference in the magnitude of the difference of the rate condition. So next, we ask the question, in what condition the decrease of the firing rate is largest? In this slide, we plotted the eta value for first reward period, or the first reward and second period, second reward in the first block, and the root switch block separately. We can see the eta value is smallest uh, in uh, in the second reward period, in the row switch block here, uh, and it about 0.4, which means that the firing rate, is, firing rate is decreased by 76% in the scan of class condition. This suggests that although the thermogenic separation of single neurons decreases for the union activity in all class conditions, the effect is most prominent in the second reward period, in the row switch block. So this result seems consistent with the uh, result of behavior experiments that I showed uh, in, in the uh, previous slide, in which we showed that hemogenic separation of single neurons increased the error rate in the second period, specifically in low switch blocks. So here's a summary. Uh, hemogenic separation of single cortex neurons increased uh, the error rate in the second choice of the test. And this increase in the firing uh, in the second choice era was more prominent in the real switch block and uh, in the first one. Mechanical hemogenic separation of single cortex neurons decreased the firing rate of premotor neurons. And this effect was observed in all test areas. However, among all the post reward tables, the decrease of firing rate of premotor neurons was most prominent in the second reward in the real switch block. So together, our analysis suggests that single motor circuit. Uh, process reward information in sequential choice decision setting or adjusting choices uh, as fast group switches. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh... Daigo, and uh, we're ap we apologize for the um, audio difficulties, um, but uh, we're doing as best, yeah, we're doing best we can. And that was a great talk, so thanks very much. Um, if anyone has a question, you can post it in the Q&A. Um, I guess my question is somewhat of a clarification question, which is uh, whether this is a deterministic task. So they, the two-step always, uh, the correct arm on this two-step bandit task is always um, correct. the correct arm. They yeah. always, it's a deterministic task. Actually, I have conducted probability testing, in which the probability of the reward is varied, but I haven't analyzed it yet. Okay. Yeah, that was going to be my next follow up question is whether the singulate was going to be uh, involved in the uh, probabilistic learning, whether that would change its involvement in the different phases. Yeah, good. Um, great. Well, I think that's all the time we have for questions here. So we can move on uh, to our final speaker of the session. Uh, we have uh, Stefan Wolf from Harvard.